The only way that we can be successful on anything on that to-do list is we got to be present. Welcome to the Productivity is Podcast. It's me, Mike Vardy, joining you once again for another great and productive conversation. This time around, I'm joined by Darren Virasamy. Darren is the co-founder of 34 Strong, and he's been focusing on building great places to work within that team, but also he's learned through that experience that greatness has its own set of operating principles. He also really believes, and and we get into this during the conversation, that collaborating with nature has been a huge catalyst for his own willingness to, to even dare to step into greatness. So we talk about the effects of nature and productivity, among other things, during this conversation. So let's get to it right now. Here is my conversation with Darren Virasamy here on the Productivity is Podcast. Enjoy. Let's dig into a little bit about you off off the top because there's going to be some people here that are that are listening and going to go, okay, who is Darren? And initially, the first thing, and I don't do this right out of the gate when I hop on a call with a person, but I'm like, how do you pronounce your name? Because it's, and I get this sometimes too with Mike Vardy is the phonetics end up being there where they say, well, Mark, because M- Mike and Mark and the Vardy in there gets kind of interesting. Like they they mix that up. But let's let's talk a little bit about about you initially and. What, what's your mission? Like, what are you working on right now that is keeping you productive? Yeah, so what's keeping me productive? Right now, I am kind of in the space of creating lots of content right now, Mike. So I've got, uh, I've got two big things that, well, three big things that I'm, I'm kind of attacking right now. So my primary company, my primary business is 34 Strong We work to create great places to work. So we're doing a lot in the space of helping organizations align and manage distributed workforces and really focus on the cultural elements of how do I keep my teams together and culture together uh, through these times of transition, through managing distributed workforces. Now, that's, uh, that's, that's the 34 strong track. We've got a whole team and we, we work all over the place and we've been doing a lot of that virtually. And it's interesting, we just launched um, just earlier this summer a podcast there called Leading Strong that gives people the power to, to kind of I ask the right questions to really develop those connections with people. The other area that I'm working on that's outside of 34 Strong that I'm, I'm really excited about, I know we're going to focus on that a lot uh, today in, in, in kind of working through, is, is a podcast I'm launching as well called The Nature Advantage. Now, I was supposed to deliver a TEDx talk this July and COVID actually pushed that out. So in the process of going through building out uh, what I thought was going to be the talk and doing some research on it, I just started realizing I'm having these fascinating interviews with some fascinating, absolutely phenomenal people that have a lot to offer. Why don't I just capture these and I can share them with the world. And the TEDx will be at supposedly summer of 2021 at, at this point. But we'll, 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 uh, we'll work towards that. But I started capturing these. So the core of it, Mike, is really looking at how people that are on what we would perceive to be the highway to human excellence. So people that are operating at that next level, that are really doing incredible things with their life. They're making an impact on many, many others' lives. They're change makers. And when we look from the outside in, we'd say, those people are really doing something for humanity. They are on the highway to excellence. The question that I've gotten asking is, do they collaborate with nature? And you might be thinking, well, what the heck does that even mean? And the whole point here is very simple. It's, do they, are they very intentional about stopping to pause to connect with nature as part of the fuel for their brilliance? Are they intentional about that? And I, uh, I've had some fascinating conversations with people like Wall Street Journal best-selling authors, uh, Grammy Award-winning musicians. Uh, I've even spoken to Tony Robbins' uh, business partner, Joseph McClendon. He's, mm-hmm. he's one of many, many just completely um, just fascinating people that are really operating on this next level. So that's kind of the direction I'm going. And that show is, is launching end of, end of 2020 to just kind of... Uh, 
share some of those interviews and, and what we've captured through the process. And on a personal side, you know, beginning of 2021, our plans got delayed a little bit. We were originally planning to, to move in the fall, uh, but we, uh, we are, are going to be in Barbados as of uh, January of 2021. 20, uh, so really, the uncertainty of today's era, I mean, as, as we're recording this in October 2020, that really hasn't slowed you down all that much then. You know, it has given us a choice. It has actually gotten us to ask, what can we do, Mike, with what we've gotten? I used to be a jet setter, like I know you were, and many other of your listeners, I'm sure, right? So I was traveling around all over the place. I was on the road quite a bit, and I had young children and whatnot, but I've really focused personally on what are the things that I can do? What are the things that have been on the list of gosh, I really want to make this happen. I really want to tell these stories, but I, I just haven't been able to do it because there was time away. You're on the road, you're doing through things. And I think it comes back to that powerful question that uh, we've got to ask ourselves. I've heard this many, many times. And it's just, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? We can ask, why is this happening for me? Right. And after we deal with the initial shock of, you know, like stepping outside in the snow in Toronto, which is, I, I know, <laughs> the area that you're from of the shock and awe of like, oh my gosh, it's so cold. But when we, when we step into these areas in our life, like the shock that many of us have gone through over the course of 2020, there's still a lot of certainty that's still there. If we get caught in the story that everything is uncertain, everything's unraveling, well, we are what we focus on, Mike. So we end up just going right down that pathway and that will force us to be unproductive. When we focus on what is certain, those are the areas in which we can be productive. When somebody's climbing the face of a mountain, what do they do? They look for anchors on which they could build and they could actually pull themselves up. You, you should see me. If you could see me virtually, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally moving as if I'm climbing a mountain right now because I speak with my hands, right? But we need those things. Even in treacherous situations and climbing an open face of a mountain seems like an area that's very uncertain, but yet people create certainty. So we have to find what those anchors are. Jonathan Fields from the, um, the Good Life Project, he talked about that in a book that he wrote, gosh, over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, using certainty, creating certainty anchors uh, uh, to, to fuel your brilliance in these times. So it's going back to what is actually certain anchoring to that and then seeing, well, what can we build from that? And, and that's been the focus. Well, one of the things that as I was going through some of your work and, and the idea of connecting with nature, right? Like getting and aligning and attuning yourself. I actually love the idea of attunement more than alignment because attunement sounds to me more um, uh, harmonious. It seems more um, human, the alignment, it, it, alignment becomes one of those buzzwords, right? And I mean, that's, whether you use it or not, like it's just that's one where I'm like, oh, I'm attuned to this. And what's interesting about, you know, the idea of the to-do list is the to-do list is most people are like, I've got to get everything done on my to-do list. And the to-do list never ends. Like there's always going to be something on your to-do list. And we tend to be driven by like the, the date on it, like due dates, or we tend to be driven by the priority level, which of course, if you have too many priorities, and I've talked about this before, and I'm not the only one. If you have too many priorities, then really you have none. You've talked about like, you know, aligning yourself and, and, and becoming more attuned with nature. Can we dive into that a little bit more? Because as people who are trying to become more productive and they're like, you know, uh, they feel that pressure, that weight, that overwhelm. There's something about that that to me sounds appealing. And I know that that, you know, the listener might go, hey, you know, how how can I make this work for me? It's powerful, Mike, because I have been the master to-do list guy, like check everything off the list and you get a bunch of things checked off the list. And what do we find? We still feel disengaged. We still feel checked out. I really, really appreciate the shift in the word as well from alignment to attunement. I'm a musician by trade as well. Mm. So I'm a, I'm a bassist hanging over my right shoulder right now is one of my favorite basses. And that is exactly what it is. It's about finding that harmony in life. From a technical standpoint, we understand, Mike, that, for instance, you know, we're so reliant on technology these days. We're so reliant on our cell phones. None of us would ever expect our cell phones to operate for the next four hours on 3% charge. What right. would we do? We would go plug it in. Mm -hmm. We'd go plug it in and we would make sure that that battery is charged. 
Yet, because we are so attached to our to-do lists and all of the things that we need to get done, we find ourselves in these spaces that we think we're going to go faster and we're going to get more done more, uh, more done by just staying in the saddle and grinding it out and going through. And we hear that a lot. We hear that a lot in pop culture. You just got to grind more. You got to hustle more. You got to do all these things. What I've come to realize through my own personal experience, this took place for me near and dear to, to my heart that got me on this path. And I didn't even realize it at the time. Sometimes though, the best way to speed up is by slowing down. Oh, I it, love that. Yep. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Or speed. I've said this before. Speed the right, like speed the right things up so you can slow the right things down. That's, that oh, too. that's beautiful. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's the space that is created that is so powerful. And sometimes when we're in a state, when we go outside into nature and just taking that pause to just be with it. And I don't mean that you have to go on a trail and go hike along, you know, in a, in a mountain range and detach from humanity uh, fully. I'm talking about notice the sunrise if you're going to your car. If you're having your morning cup of coffee, instead of looking at your phone, look out your window for a moment. Notice the wind that's blowing the trees. It creates a level of presence. The only way that we can be successful on anything on that to-do list or in, in, in kind of paraphrasing what you said or the right elements of what's on your to-do list is we got to be present. You know, sometimes we're so focused on what we didn't do yesterday and what we need to do next year that we never actually live in the now and we never take presence. Nature has a way of making us present and the way that we're going to be successful and really get the energy out of life that we're capable of giving and providing it back is by being present in the moment. And I found that nature really helps to make that a, uh, a reality for us. Uh, and, and in studying many others and having these conversations, it's been fascinating to learn what has unlocked, like books have been written because of accidental experiences that people chose to take that pause, to get reattuned, to, to, to make that connection. So Rob Walker was on the program before, and he's written the book, The Art of Noticing. And that was one of the things that came up was this idea of just noticing things. And Jonathan Fields, who you mentioned, and I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting Jonathan and seeing him speak on a few occasions. We talked before we jumped on the call about the World Domination Summit, and you and I could probably talk for hours about the mutual friends and acquaintances that we have. But Jonathan talked about meta-attention too. So I'm a big believer that productivity ultimately is about intention plus attention. What is your intention? How are you going to pay attention to it? When you merge those, you have a partnership, and those are working together in harmony, you're going to end up doing the right things. So how... How does someone start to think about, how does someone start to lean into that nature aspect? So when they say, you know, like I'm so, because the bias will always lend you back to the to-do list, right? Like you're always so, because it's just what, how we've operated. How do you, how do you help someone start to shift so that, and, and in a way that doesn't overwhelm them at the same time, because, you know, you and I both know that if you try to do too much all at once, then old habits will resurface. So how, how, how would you suggest someone start to lean into this and make this happen in a way that's going to be sticky? So I'm going to share uh, just a couple of simple tips uh, that, that, that come out that are just things that you can do immediately to start your nature collaboration. This is actually, there's a download at my website, darrenverasami.com that will give you five of these. And I'm just going to share maybe two of them with you. And they're so simple, Mike. It's, it's kind of like, duh. I, I want it to be that way for listeners because it was like that for me because I wrestled with this for a while and it, it just hit me on the head one day. So number one is look up. Look up and ask, what am I missing? Okay. When we can get into the habit of asking, what am I missing? When you step outside, take a look around and just ask, what am I missing? We start creating that circuitry of meta attention, which Jonathan spoke about, right? Mm -hmm. When we just ask that question, there's always something that's right there. If you look outside, you look at a leaf and you see that leaf on first pass and you say, well, what am I missing? And then all of a sudden you look at it a little closer and you say, oh, wow, there's some, what looks to be like veins, there's stems. Oh, it's starting to discolor on this area. Why is that important? You might be thinking, well, who cares about a leaf? Well, when you pay that attention there, when you're in a situation where you're, that meta attention, that higher level of attention needs to be so we can get to the product, productivity levels that we'd like to have, 
we can actually do more in a shorter time because we're not thinking about 40 other things. We're just with that leaf, seeing it for what it is, or we're mm. just with that project or that task, seeing it for what it is. So look up and ask, what am I missing? Get into the habit of asking that question once a day. You know, go give yourself, it's this simple, Mike, go, go outside or look out your window and ask that question and give yourself 30 seconds to just let your mind wander and see what you catch. That yeah. is one of the pieces. If yeah. you have a team and if you have meetings, the other one that I'll share with people, this comes from and this is actually a, a, a tip that I learned from Mike Michalowicz. He's the author of Fix This Next, The Pumpkin Plan, Profit First, many other books. But uh, Brilliant stuff. Brilliant team. stuff. I use, his, I use Profit First with my own business. It's game changing. Oh, um, me as well. And, and I, Mike, is, uh, we've been, uh, we, we're actually really good friends. And I've been in mastermind groups with him for, uh, for, for many years. And one of the things that has, has happened, we've done this in our mastermind groups, Mike. And we've and I've seen seen it done with with meetings. Just have a walking meeting with somebody. And I know right now, as we're recording this in October of 2020, a lot of stuff is still being done virtually. So maybe you're going outside and you're you're, you're planning that with a team member, just saying, "Hey, I, I want you to go outside and be on the phone with me." And and we're doing it. And some people are actually working together, but keep your social distance. And maybe you can have that meeting outside, just taking a walk. It gets the ideas going. It gets the, the connections going. And the fascinating story for Mike was in a lot of his books, a lot of people don't know this. And in, in the podcast episode I recorded with him, we, we, we got into this. But he, all of his books are rooted in biomimicry in some way, shape, or form. There's a connection to something that he learned from an accidental experience in nature, just being out, taking a walk on the same trail. And something showed up in that walking meeting that he was having with somebody else or just taking that time on his own, making that part of his intention, as you talked about, that became his reality and opened up that door. So have a walking meeting with somebody. Nobody said that work had to take place with you chained to your desk, staring at a, at, at a screen. And I think right now, because we're so Zoom heavy, sometimes some calls that we might typically take and might do as a Zoom, ask for, hey, can we do this? Can we do this as a phone call and, and get outside and take that walk or just be outside and have that meeting and then ask yourself, what else am I seeing just by being out here? And it'll it charge yeah. you and it brings us different creativity. <laughs> the science on it and the, the history of that is uh, is pretty fascinating. It's true. And in the event that it's too cold, like it's too snowy, just listen to episode, uh, I think it's episode 166 of this podcast where I talked to the co-founder of Unsit, Rob Jacobs, who talks about some of that science you were talking about. And then you can have this treadmill. I know a lot of people do that too. Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. All right, we'll be back with this conversation right after these messages. You know, I've learned a thing or two over the years about getting a lot of meaningful work done. And I want to help you get a lot of meaningful work done too. And not to have to go through the trials and tribulations I had to along the way. And that's why I created the Productivityist Playbook. Here's what you get with the Productivityist Playbook. You get an ebook to help provide you with the basics you'll need to shape your own personal productivity workflow. I review simple and effective strategies to help you deal with your email, calendar, time management, and more. You also get audio files that will help you get even more out of the Productivityist Playbook. 
You get a series of videos where I dive into some of the tips and tactics that I discuss in the ebook and a base series of plays that you can integrate into your life so that you can spend less time guessing and more time going. You also get a formal introduction to time crafting, which is a personal productivity approach that I've designed. This methodology and framework is simple, flexible, and durable, allowing you to deal with what you need to do, decide what you ought to do and ought not to do, and ultimately do more of what you want to do. It's time for you to put the personal back into your productivity. The Productivity is Playbook will help you do that and more. All you need to do to get the Productivity is Playbook is go to Productivityist dot com slash playbook that's productivityist.com slash playbook i encourage you to check out the productivity playbook and everything that it has to offer today and now let's get back to the program what's interesting um as you were talking about this looking at the leaf um and some people think i'm absolutely nuts for doing this mostly the people that don't travel in my my productivity circles i there's a bus stop just outside my house and i mean i'm not taking the bus so much right now um, but it's a beautiful day here in, in Victoria in October. It's nice. And I mean, the, the weather, it's fall. Um, and I look up and there's this hedge right in front of the bus stop. So it's, a, it's about nine, nine feet, eight, nine feet tall. And you look up and you see the green leaves of these evergreen type of hedges against the blue sky, like the contrast of the blue sky. And I'm looking up at it and going, this is amazing. Like when you think about it, like all of that stuff, when you just stop and you said 30 seconds, and I know a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time. Time moves. You know what? If you stop for 30 seconds to think, it's going to feel way longer than you actually, than it, than it actually is. You know what I mean? It's going to feel so long because um, you're not used to it. But if you're just in, if you're just going, 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 that 30 seconds will fly by. So it gives you the ability to have that intention, right? That ability to, to kind of make something happen and connect. It doesn't take a lot of time to do that, right? It, it doesn't take a lot of time to do that, Mike. And what's so fascinating is we'll say, uh, I don't have time to do that. But yet at that same bus stop, you have time to be on Instagram, yep. on Twitter, or on Facebook. Turn that phone down for just a moment and look up because that is what's often going through. Or we're checking our email to just see if there was something new that came through on our email that we had just checked You know, five minutes before. Is it going to make that big of a difference if you got that email 30 seconds sooner? Or, uh, or, or uh, you know, or, or you saw what uh, a friend had for breakfast today? No, it's not. What, what, what creates the difference and, and really connects us to excellence is the process of taking notice. And here's something that's powerful. Marcus Buckingham, he once made a statement along the lines, something like this, I'm going to paraphrase him, but excellence effectively has its own set of operating principles, right? So you can't look at failure to study, to, to create excellence. Excellence, we got to study excellence to create more excellence. Right. When we look at what nature has to offer, it is so immaculate that we could look at a, a, a maple tree, right? See, I had to go there. You're in Canada, right? <laughs> yeah. And we just got some amazing maple uh, leaf shaped cookies, by the way, last night that I had no plans on eating, but they were brought home and they were quite delicious. That's an aside. <laughs> but the maple leaf, right? We just think of that, Mike, and how amazing it is that so many of them can, can come together on a tree, be almost the same shape, same size, look the same in so many ways. And then when you look at them individually, there's little nuances that are completely different in distinguishing from that. So what's, what, where, where am I going with this? In North America alone, the UN had, had conducted a study over the past few years, and they found that 82% of our population lives in urban areas. So, and what there, there's been findings of as well, just in North America alone is nearly 90% of our time is spent indoors. So what does that mean for humanity? It means that we're having far less just accidental encounters with nature, mm -hmm. right? In the past, we used to just, we used to have to go walk to places uh, or ride our bike somewhere. There was just more of these interactions that would take place as we are more and more technologically connected, we are more and more disconnected from one of the greatest sources of human advancement in and of itself, which is nature, right? Studies have said, I think earlier this year, Cornell did a study or, or beginning of 2020, they, they, they did a study and they found that people that spend just as little as 10 minutes in nature, their problem solving abilities go, go up, 
their creativity increases, right? And, and, and they're coming back with a more optimistic outlook. Aren't those things that we need when we're on the grind? Aren't those the basic things that we're looking at doing when we go to the store and buy a bottle of vitamins and supplements and different things? Go outside. Take a look up. Notice the leaves on the blue sky. It's right there for us to grasp if we're willing to. It's always there. It's always willing to collaborate with us if we're there and want to. Darren, I got one more question with you before we wrap up. And I I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Do you journal? I do. I do journal. I am, interestingly enough, as we're recording this, I am in a pause on journaling. I go through seasons where I'm very, very heavily into it. And then I intentionally take the pause and, and I fill that time with even more reading time. I read every day, regardless of if I'm journaling or not. And I will share one thing with you about journaling that took me in a fascinating direction, Mike. I experimented with this and it was fascinating where I just closed my eyes and wrote because I, my handwriting is so bad. So I focus on strengths and I'd write stuff, handwrite in my journal. I couldn't even read it half the time when I was done. So I've gotten to the place of typing it out, keeping it together there. And I would allow myself to just write and just see where my fingers took me um, and where my mind flowed. And that was usually after a morning routine of going outside, cold, warm, rain, shine, whatever it was in the morning, uh, very, very early uh, to go through. So as we wrap up, I want you to leave my audience. And by the way, I, I mean, I journal only in the evening. I've tried other methods, but I think for me, it's like, it's one of those undervalued productivity things. Plus there are things like, for example, we, I talked about the blue sky and the contrasting with the green leaf. I journaled about that. And further to that, I took a picture of it too. Because if you're there with the phone anyway, I'm like, I want to make sure that I remember, I get to live that moment again, right? I get to, I get to do that again. And frankly, if you're somebody who loves to, and I'll just throw a little tip out there. If you're trying to get away from, you know, like, I don't want to be on Instagram. You know what? I took that photo and I Instagrammed it. I'm like, Hey, look what I noticed. Right? Like, so it became this thing where I'm like, I managed to click off two completely separate tasks there if I wanted to and say, Hey, you know what? I've posted Instagram. I've connected with nature. It's, it could be a gateway for you, but I digress. If someone wants to connect with nature and you've, you've given me a couple of quick, simple tips, but if they want to start to lean into that more and more, and they want to do it again with ease or simplicity, um, what's one thing that they can do? Like, what should they do when they're done listening? This listener right now that's listening says, I want to do this. What should they do right as soon as they're done finishing listening to us that can help them make that happen? What I would, would say, because we're so calendar driven, we're so calendar driven for many of us, schedule your outside time and protect it like your life depends on it. Put it on your calendar. Just put it on your calendar. One day this week, you're going to give yourself some time to just be outside, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's taking a walk. Maybe it's sitting outside in a park. Maybe you're just going outside and reading outside, or you're going to have a conversation with a friend, but put it on your calendar. Put 15 minutes on your calendar. Start small and you can increase that uh, as, as you're going through. Just But protect that time. That is not movable time. That is your time. And that is just like we would charge the cell phone, the piece of technology we need to charge you. That's what it's about. Darren, this has been a great conversation and I know we could talk a lot more, but I want to be respectful of your time and the time of our listeners. So where can people keep up with you and your work and and learn more about what you're doing in in the wide areas that you're you're doing a lot of great work in? Because my last name can be challenging to to spell, uh, you can look me up at uh, darrenverasami.com. There's a guide that has expert tips from from Mike Michalowicz, uh, from uh, TV personalities, from Grammy award-winning musician. There's a guide that's there. So if you're looking for different ideas on how to get started, go to darrenverasami.com or visit natureadvantageshow.com. That'll take you to the same place and you can download that guide. That podcast will be launched by the time uh, the this, this show is airing in, in 2021. It's uh, launching actually uh, in the next next week here. So it's going to be going. We're going to have lots of lots of folks there. If you're interested in what we do on the organizational development side, uh, you can check us out at 34strong.com. And of course, connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, any of uh, any of those vehicles. You can find me there and I'd love to interact with you and 
actually hear what, what you're doing. I'm always fascinated by what others are doing as well in this space. Darren, thanks so much for taking the time today to join me on the Productivities Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. Big thanks to Darren for joining me on the program this week. You can learn about all the things we touched on through the show notes that are displayed both you know, at the website and also in the podcast app that you're listening to. Just click on the links and the ones that you find interesting. Check out what we had to discuss. By the way, if you want to make sure you don't miss a single episode of the podcast, just hit the subscribe button in the podcast app that you're listening to this episode in right now, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you don't want to miss a single episode that drops every week and you want an easier time to go back through the archives to look at the 350 plus episodes I've delivered over the years, then hit that subscribe button today. That's it for this episode. Thanks again so much for taking the time to join me. And until next time, I'm Mike Vardy, the host of the Productivity is Podcast, reminding you to stop guessing and start going. I'll see you later. <laughs>